Hi guys, it's Monday the 17th of October and it's now 5 to 9 in the evening. Now, I've got a few items I want to show you in this video because I've acquired another barricade lamp which I bought spares repairs because it wasn't working but now it does work. Um, a couple of items I actually picked up from the local recycling centre and I actually want to talk about my PC here because one of the items I've got is actually related to that. I was having issues with it, but it seems to have um, behaved itself since I bought the replacement part. Anyway, before we get into all that, I want to talk about an idea I've had for the channel. Uh, which I've actually already started working on, basically. I've been prepping things over at Mum's. So as I've mentioned before, I've got a shed over at Mum's. You know, it was the one my little brother was using for storage until he moved away to Ireland. Um, so for a few months you know I've had a bench set up in there with tools on the back wall when they got the shed it came with one of those cheap plastic tool organizer things um, you know, you rearrange all the pegs on the board <coughs> and whatnot I mean it does its job but it's just crap in my opinion but it's working for now so I might try and find something better in the future, but it'll do for now. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so I had all that set up in there, and then I got to thinking, I thought, you know, I can get Wi-Fi up here in the shed. I could potentially live stream. And I thought, I've got computers quite capable of um, being able to do it. More than capable, you know. Like the Dell Inspire on here which is the um, sleeper build I bought from my younger brother and finished off because he hadn't quite finished it this is the Inspire on 3650 which has actually got Wi-Fi card um, built into it <clears throat> so I thought why don't I do that you know I'm usually over at mum's on a Sunday with nothing to do so I thought maybe for a couple of hours I could just go live here on YouTube um, either just a random hangout like this or I could be fixing something or you know a bicycle or something electronic or a computer or laptop or something I don't know I'm sure I could find something um, <clears throat> and plus I could potentially you know make videos up there as well like uh, film the progress on the mopeds which I still haven't progressed on well, actually, I made some progress on one because I'd started putting it back together and then the um, stroke in the back of my eye happened and I haven't got back to it since. Mainly because I've been busy with other things ever since I got my sight back. I just haven't had a chance to get back to it. Um, but anyway, I've now put that on pause for a little while, which I'll talk about why in a bit. <coughs> so... As I've acquired a bunch of new tools as well, because I've got a pillar drill, um, bench grinder, three angle grinders, I don't know why I want three, but I've got three. Uh, da -da -da -da. A bench sander. You know, it's a belt sander thing and it's got a little shelf on the side with like a, I don't know if it's a grindy disc or something on the side of it. <clears throat> uh, but then a bunch of hand tools that I've acquired as well, because uh, my stepdad, has um, acquired his late neighbour's tools, you know, he bought them from his um, his wife. Um, he didn't pass away that long ago actually, and I helped my stepdad uh, bring all the tools back. He bought them all from his wife, he didn't pay for it. Um, but she's actually Canadian. Um, and when she's able to, she wants to move back to Canada, so, you know, getting the shed sorted is one less headache, if you like, one less worry. And she said herself, you know, she's just glad the tools have gotten to a, a good home, rather than just rusting away in the shed. So, and we tidied up the shed for her. <clears throat> we didn't leave it in a mess or anything, we did tidy it up.
Anywho. Um, yeah, so I've actually started organising the shed. I've actually got two benches in there now. So I thought I'm going to need somewhere to put a computer if I'm going to stream from it. <clears throat> um, we have got a bucket load of tools as well that we want to get rid of. Because um, my stepdad had a bit of a sort out of his as well. Because he had way too many spanners and way too many screwdrivers. In fact, I think I'm pretty much the same way. I've got a toolbox fully kitted up here. Well, I say fully kitted, I've got all my bicycle tools in there as well. That is the main toolbox, really. I've got another one down in the shed, which is just basically there for when I'm down. So I've got to keep running up and down the stairs for tools. Um, Plus, I don't want to keep my bike tools down in the shed because if anybody did break in and steal them, you know, they're not going to get the expensive bike tools. They're up here safe. Uh, so that's the other reason. And I tend to prefer fixing bikes up here anyway when I'm doing them here at home. Just because I don't like people nosing at me out there. That's the problem with, a, you know, living in a flat like this with a communal area. Anybody can come and be nosy. <laughs> and I just don't like that. I just want to get on with what I'm doing. Anyway. <clears throat> um, and of course, I've got a bucket load of tools over at Mum's now. Wrenches. Screwdrivers. In fact, I had a bit of a sort out of mine as well. And I've thrown those in the toolbox. So I've got a random toolbox. Full of spanners and screwdrivers and I don't know what else I've thrown in there that I don't want. Either going to put it on Marketplace or... Um, blah, 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 blah. Take it to a car boot hopefully next weekend because there's still going to be a couple left before they finish for the season. So I said to Mum, you know, we've still got that car boot stuff. Did you want to get a couple more in while we can? While the season is still going, she said, yeah, so. Because again, the last car boot I actually went to was before I had um, the eye stroke. Sounds weird calling it that, an eye stroke. But technically, well, stroke in the eye is what I'll call it. Um... Yeah, that must have been a good sort of two months ago now. Because, well, she's been busy with other things and I've been busy with other things. Just been busy for the last couple of months. Usually at the weekends. And usually right when the car boot is on, which is on a Saturday. <laughs> Typically, is that is, isn't it? That's typical. Right. Um, so I've still got to finish organising the shed. I've, obviously I've got to store the car boot stuff in there. Um, tomorrow I'm actually heading over to Mum's to help Stepdad start building a lean-to on the side of the bungalow. Because um, it's going to be easier to work on his stationary engines out there than it is to keep sort of lugging them in and out of the main workshop. And he said I can also put the mopeds in there and do those in there which is why I've kind of held off on um, doing any more work on them. He's also obtained, thanks to me, a shot blasting cabinet. Just a little one that you can sit up on a workbench uh, but that'd be great for doing small parts and whatnot. In fact I could probably do a lot of bicycle restorations. I've actually somewhere in his workshop there's my um, Parkside um, shot blasting gun as well, you know, one that you just you don't use in a cabinet. Um, so if we want to do bigger parts, we could probably find a big tub or something to put them in and then use that gun. Um, so for the time being, well actually I don't know where it is, it's in his workshop somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Where? I don't know. Um... <clears throat> Yeah, so 
you did actually say that some of the stuff that's actually being stored in mine, like the electric lawnmower, can go in that lean to when um, that's gone up. Actually, to be honest, I'm happy with the gardening tools where they are. They're not problems problem. There's hanging up on one of the end walls. Actually, the end wall by the door. Um, yeah, they're not a problem. But the lawnmower does get in the way. It's a bit big and bulky. So if we could hang that in the lean-to or something, that would actually be great. <clears throat> I'm not looking forward to moving them stationary engines because one of them is rather large and rather heavy. <laughs> it's a struggle with three of us to move it. <clears throat> Sorry if me spinning around in the chair is annoying. I don't even know why I'm doing it myself. You know, it's just one of them office chairs. It's just one of them things you've got to do, isn't it? Whee! I'm a big kid at heart. Leave me alone. Yeah, I do need webcams. I'm going to need two of them. Because <laughs> um, I've been talking to my little brother as well. I was talking to him on Facebook. and uh, I might even be him who's been messaging me on Facebook this evening, actually. I've got a couple of messages up there, I can see. Um, yeah, he wanted to know if I had a few things like some Ethernet cables, an Ethernet switch. Um, if I knew where his webcam was. Yes. <laughs> it was up on the um, second monitor here. It's in the box ready to go. That doesn't actually bother me because, well, one, it's his, and two, I've got to go and buy another web camera anyway to use over at Mum's. I might as well go buy two. So, I could buy two the same. I want an HD camera. I don't want anything else. I've actually, well, I did have two. I've actually chucked one in the bin before I stole the USB cable off of it because I need it for some for a um, game controller fix a friend of mine bought me his and I just plugged it in and it just wasn't doing anything and then I found out if I wiggled the, uh, US the cable in just the right position down by the USB um, you'd get the um, connection tone on the um, computer play so I figured that's a cable issue so I've actually got a spare one to solder on, it's only four wires, that shouldn't be too difficult. Um, <clears throat> and I've got a, actually no, I think I threw both in the bin, because I did connect them to the PC. And expecting Windows 10, you know, to find um, the drivers and whatnot, no, nothing. And I haven't got a driver disk for either of them, so in the bin they went. And to be honest, the new one's not that expensive, so I've already had a look. So, yeah, I might leave that a couple of... It'll be a good few weeks, maybe a month or two, before I, I'm ready to do all this live streaming from Mums. <clears throat> and so long as it's not too cold, because we are coming into the colder seasons now, and I've got no heater down there. I don't know that we'd be able to afford to run a heater down there at, uh, at the moment. Yeah, um... See, I've already shown you the Dell PC, and that's the one I've picked to use down there. I've just got to get a monitor together, any necessary cables and keyboard and mouse and whatnot. It's not like I need a gaming mouse or keyboard down there or anything. I just need a basic keyboard and mouse. Um, I've actually got a monitor, but I've not got a stand for it. So I've got a couple of options there. I could either go and get a stand from somewhere or even a wall bracket to put on the shed wall. Or I could um, <clears throat> go and find another monitor. I actually like the idea of putting it on the shed wall. Uh, now, I did see in a charity shop about a week or so ago, just over here, the road here actually, they did have one, just a little bracket for small monitors and whatnot. If they've still got it Thursday, I'll grab that and then I can just mount the monitor on the wall. That might be a better option. And we'll keep um, bench space clear that way, wouldn't it? Um, so yeah, obviously I can't take 
the computer over from the moped, so that's going to have to uh, go in the car. I've got a few other things, large items that I want to get over to Mum's as well. Partly for storage and whatnot. I've got some traffic cones I want to put over there, just to clear some space and mine. Um, I'm going to need another fluorescent light to go over the other bench. Um, I've got a twin fluorescent light over there, but that's a six foot one and that's rather overkill. <laughs> so I'm going to bring that one back here and take one of my either a five footer or a four footer over there. I haven't decided yet, pretty much whatever I want to grab off the shelf, I think. <clears throat> I think the twin is a six foot, that could be a five foot twin, I can't remember. I'd like a twin fluorescent in there, because I do like twin fluorescents for some reason, but it's just, it's not a big enough shed. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm actually quite looking forward to getting all this set up and sorted. I've already had to um, add two more outlets in for the other bench. So I could run like the drill and whatnot. And for a bit of extra bench support, I might put a couple of legs in if I can find some legs to put in. Because at the moment, the bench is actually on some very large brackets on the wall. And I mean large brackets. But I just think the wall is, itself is flexing a bit too much, so I'd rather have a bit of extra support there. Just for peace of mind more than anything. It's not going to go anywhere. It's spent months in my stepdad's shed, mounted exactly the same way with um, the bench sander, the pillar drill, and there was something else mounted on it as well. So it's actually got more weight on it than what I've got on it, and that survived. So it's just, I don't know, it's just my mind, I just want peace of mind. So I've got to find a couple of legs to shove under it, I will. <clears throat> Might have to find a computer chair like this, and the stupid thing is, we dumped one the other week. <laughs> Before I thought of any of this, we took one down the dump. Never mind, computer chairs you pick up usually quite cheap anyway. Usually. Apparently, I suck at grammar. <laughs> <clears throat> As I said, I'm actually quite looking forward to this. I just want to bring something different to the channel, you know. I mean, pretty much 99.9% .9 of the videos I've uploaded to this channel has been filmed in this flat. And I don't know about you guys, but I'm getting quite bored of that. I want a bit more vari... I, yeah, that's it. I just want a bit more variation on the channel, that's all. Sometimes I just struggle to come up with ideas. You know things to record and whatnot and I don't know if it's just my autistic side or whatever but sometimes I'll come up with an idea then I'll scrap it because I just think it's crap it probably wasn't crap but in my mind it was crap and I just think nobody's gonna like it so <clears throat> I need to think about what else I want to take over to mum's any hoozle. Uh, da, 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 da. That's not what I thought it was. Anyway, I'm just going to move this PC out of the way. Because I'll take that down in the shed, obviously with everything else, and just leave it there so it's ready to go in the car when uh, Mum's next uptown. <coughs> I should show you what I, uh, I acquired. I'm going to start with the barricade lamp. Now, without actually looking up on the <laughs> Facebook groups, I can't remember what this one is. Or even the eBay listing. I know it's made by Nissan, which is a German company. That's Nissan, not Nissan. Um, I bought it at Spares Repairs, and this body was a lot filthier than it currently is. I mean, there's still some 
grounding dirt around there. I don't think I'll ever get that off and there's a lot of scratches and gouges and things. It's been well used this one. Um, which doesn't bother me. I actually don't mind lamps in this condition. Um, so long as the case and everything isn't like cracked or split, which it isn't. Although I did change the clear lens because I actually believe I've got several spare Nissan lenses off the same seller, off the same seller I've got this amp from. Because um, the clear one, the clear side of this one had a big old crack through it, so I changed it. As I had some clears that fit and match up quite nicely actually. Um, but yeah, I got it working. Seems like it was just a dirty switch. Um, and then the flashing side stopped working. It, like it, had, it was like it had two um, steady burn settings. But wiggling that switch, you know, just keep taking it on and off, seems to have fixed that one as well. I didn't think to clean that switch, unfortunately. I only cleaned the power switch, and that's what got it working. <clears throat> like at the moment, I haven't got anything to poke in there to turn it on. Did have a paper clip here somewhere, but that's disappeared. I think Smudge has knocked it off the table. When she was up here earlier this evening playing around with things and being a pain in the bum. Uh, da, da. Oh, actually, I don't know what I could use. One of these might do it. Oh, yeah, I forgot. It's um, got a light sensor on it. No, it's just triggered. <laughs> There's the red side, there's the white side, and hopefully for some reason, even though it was working in this light, when I switched it, it stopped working, I had to take it down into the dark again. Quite a slow flash on this one, isn't it? For some reason, the UK regulations say they've got to flash faster than that. I don't know why. I think I prefer a flash, you know, which is where it's on longer and off short, a bit like this one. Yeah, another nice one to the collection. I have got a Nissan Nitro, which has actually got different body shapers. You can see with this one, it's got the um, sloped parts there. The Nitro doesn't, it's more of a box shaped, but that's also got the red and white lenses. I think I've got a couple of um, yellow lenses on as well. <clears throat> yeah, 12 quid. Spares are a pair. Some people might think £12 is a bit expensive. And I thought, well, even if it doesn't work, I've still got a lamp style in the collection that I haven't gotten. Maybe at some point I could find a circuit to put in it. But no, nope. I fixed what was there. Sweet. Now, as Mum lives pretty close to a recycling centre that has a reuse shop, I'm not sure if this is something anywhere else in the UK does, but at least here, um, <clears throat> at least with North Norfolk District Council that is, at their recycling centres that have a big enough site, so not all of them actually have a reuse shop. They've actually got what they call a reuse shop, which is just basically a converted um, portable cabin. <clears throat> um, and they have some other stuff outside, like larger stuff like uh, pe perhaps petrol wall mowers and things. Um, and the bicycles and things go outside. And sometimes when we go down there, I like to have a bit of a quick look in there. Sometimes you find nothing, well at least nothing that would interest me, and then sometimes you find PC RAM. That's only one gig of DDR2, each stick is, so there's four gigs there, each stick is one gig. They all match as well, so it's like someone's replaced a full set in their PC. Um, there was some older stuff as well in a uh, bubble wrap bag. So we've got some DDR there. Is that 256? Yeah, 256 megs. Um, we've got some older SD RAM. You see, it's got the two notches on it. 
no idea what value that is, there's no sticker. In fact, we've got four like that, four SD sticks. We've actually got a pair here, 128 megs. Look at that. Don't know if you can see that, but they are a matching pair there. Perhaps they came with a system. And Infineon, another 256 meg SD stick. <clears throat> I didn't know that's what was in the um, bubble wrap bag thing. I just grabbed it. And believe it or not, I paid £1 for all of this. Not tested yet. Um, but to be honest, even if some of this doesn't work, it was a pound. <clears throat> the way it's been stored actually would tell me it's still good RAM though. So what we've got here, and they're in Corsair, Corsair packs, and say 2 gig, but they aren't actually um, 2 gig sticks. That one, that one is actually a Corsair though. <laughs> Corsair value select. Uh, one gigabyte stick, and I think this one has yeah, a 256 meg. Probably DDR2. Looking at that, I don't know why you'd want 256 megabytes um, in DDR2, but never mind. So I've got those. There's actually three items, and I cannot remember for the life of me what the third item was. Look anyway, what the other item I've got was a funky light fitting. Now, unfortunately, the bulb broke. Well, the bulb was already broken in it when I bought it, and it, this was in the packet as well. Brand new in the packet. In fact, still got the fixings under there. Um, and it's what they call an architectural lamp. And as you can see, it's got the two contacts there. So it had a tube-like bulb that would just plug straight in. Not something I've seen often here in the UK, and you can get LED replacements for this. Um, so I'm going to do that. And then mount it up there, because I want a different light up there. A little push button switch there. Now I have found some of these on eBay as well, because I was going to put three up there. And just have them to switch them on individually. Because that LED light is good, but... It's when I do little things here at the desk, you know, like little soldering jobs and whatnot, there's not a great deal of light from it. So I was just thinking of uh, putting these up, something different. I can get these fittings quite cheap. This was a pound as well. Um, yeah, I spent three quid in total on three items. But uh, yeah, for the life of me, I cannot remember what that third item was. Very unusual fitting, and quite rare, especially trying to find an original bulb. In fact, I looked on eBay and the only original bulbs, filament bulbs that I could find, are in Australia. <laughs> There's no way I'm buying them and having them shipped. One, the shipping was like 40 odd quid, and two, I wouldn't trust it coming that far, you know, glass bulbs. Really wouldn't trust it, no matter how well they were packed, I wouldn't trust it. Um, she fell off. Yeah, it's got that simple little lamp as well. Last time I actually saw a style of light fitting like this, I was a kid actually. It's the last time I saw one. So they were, at least I don't think they were that popular over here. But they're designed so they would go like above like pictures and mirrors and things like that. And that was the purpose of them. Dax, that's the name. And in fact the ones I found on eBay are also Dax, but they've got the pull cord on them. Um, which I don't really want, so I don't really know if I want to buy those. But I have found some LED, some Bell. LED bulbs for this. I didn't know Bell still existed actually. Um, but I don't quite like the design of those, so I might go for the slightly more expensive ones. Um, I don't know. I'll think about that Thursday. Very well made um, lamp. It's even got this safety cut off switch there. So obviously, when the bulb is removed, that then cuts power to. 
these, both of these, so you, when the bulb is out you're not going to get a shock if you stick your fingers in there. So you have to have the bulb in to liven it up and then you've got the main on off switch there. I can't believe that was actually brand new and in the pack. But obviously the original bulb that had a crack in it. I was going to keep it for display purposes but unfortunately it fell over on my floor and just finished the bulb off basically. Lovely big hole in it. Yeah. So I was a bit disappointed because that was the original filament bulb. I never mind. I do like little strip lights like this as well. I've actually got a couple. I've got a couple of those that were designed to go in the old um, sideboards as we used to call them and display cabinets that homes used to have. I've actually got about four of them. <laughs> um, plus I use one in the cupboard here in the hallway that actually still uses an incandescent bulb. It's on its second one actually in... I installed that light years ago. Years and years ago I installed that light. Well I've been in this flat 13 years. I must have put that light in there maybe in the first or the second year I was in this flat. And it's only on its second bulb. But then again I don't use it that often. I only use it when I go in there to look for something. And it's only on for a matter of minutes so. <clears throat> That's one of the reasons I haven't bothered putting an LED in that one because I don't see the point. It's not used enough. <clears throat> Plus I've got a bucket load of um, filament bulbs spare for that thing so. Hell, if it's got through two in 13 years, I'm sure I'd dread to think how long the other spares are going to last. Possibly my bloody lifetime. Uh, clear this off. I need to get this tested. At some point. I'm going to put those there for now. Right. Last item. Possibly not the last subject, but the last item of this. So, my um, daily driver PC here, the Ryzen 5, has got a liquid cooler. Um, as installed by my brother when he built the system. About a year ago now? I think I bought this about a year ago. Something like that, or it could have been earlier this year. Um, and every once in a while, and it's actually doing it now when I first turn it on, so from a cold start when it's been turned off all night, it makes a god awful noise. I don't even know how to describe it, it's just weird. As if you can hear the liquid being pumped around and the pump makes noise. Um, but uh, not last week, the week before, and the week before that, it was doing that on quite a regular basis throughout the day when I had the PC on, and it was actually getting highly annoying. It was also making me a bit worried that, you know, perhaps the pump or something was failing on it. So, I went on Amazon, I bought this, a Noctua cooler. Big old heat sink in there and not to a fan. It's an award winning NH U12S cooler. Yep, just a tower cooler, just an ordinary passive cooler. Um, and to be honest, it wasn't that cheap, it was about 60 quid. The most amount of money I've actually spent on a PC part to date, I think. Aside from actually buying this PC. That was the most expensive PC I've ever bought. <clears throat> um, although I did actually spend a little bit more money, accidentally. Um, a few months ago I was actually looking on Amazon for thermal paste and whatnot. Um, and I'd forgotten I'd put one in my basket, it was um, some Corsair. So when I paid for this one, 
I'd still forgotten that was in my basket and I paid for that and got this as well. <laughs> so I've actually got some um, Corsair performance paste. <clears throat> I might actually put that in my brother's box as like a free gift. Because this has got thermal in it. It comes with it. It's actually quite a nice looking um, cooler. It's got a fair bit of weight to this as well. I don't think a cooler could actually um, be that weighty. But this is actually meant for an AM4 socket, which is what this is. So in the box of brackets, there isn't really a lot in there. Because <laughs> it's not designed for multi-processing processing processor sockets yep that's got the accessories yeah you see AMD4 and the accessories it comes with and then uh, there's the classic Noctua brown and cream fan which I actually like chocolate brown is what I would actually call that that's what it reminds me of and cream, chocolate and cream, there we go. <laughs> so, yeah, at some point I probably will still go ahead and install it, even though this has behaved itself since I bought this. I'm not kidding, it's like it knew and was like, nope, I'm going to behave myself now. <clears throat> so, yeah, that will go on at some point, because to be honest, I've always preferred this type of cooler to liquid. I don't know why, it's just something... I don't know what it is about liquid cooler, I'm just not comfortable using them. Even though this one's been totally fine. It's just one of those simple, it's an up here brand, it's just a simple, you know, single fan, small radiator, sealed up unit type jobbies. Well, it's worked. I mean, I've not had any problems with it, not really, apart from making um, weird and wonderful, well, probably weird and not so wonderful noises. <clears throat> Yeah, but like I said, it's been working fine now. It's only been doing it when I've turned the PC on, so from a cold start, basically. Alright. Is there anything else? Before I shut the camera down and go away, is there anything else that I can think of? <laughs> Um, currently I've got a Lego railway track going around the lounge. Um, and a little Lego street. I'll show you that actually. Let's have to move you guys over here somewhat. I can only go so far because of the power cable. See, Lego track. Some trains. A street. And it goes underneath the um, sofas on the other side of the lounge. Which I did deliberately. In fact, I've designed it like this deliberately. Because um, I actually really do miss having a Lego City in this lounge. Didn't think I'd actually miss it as much as I do. Because, um, you know, before Filthy House actually filmed in here, I had big old tables around the room and big old city and whatnot. In fact, I was in the process of um, redesigning everything and relaying, you know, changing all the layout and everything. <clears throat> Um, and of course that all went when Filthy House SOS filmed here. Uh, I mean, don't, don't get me wrong, I absolutely love the lounge as it is. I love the fact I've got the sofas, you know, and the TV cabinets that no one's actually realised, or at least no one's said anything, that they are actually four kitchen cabinets put together. So it's technically an upcycled TV cabinet. <laughs> Seriously, they are um, kitchen cabinets, those cabinets. Well, if you actually look carefully, you can see the screw holes on the sides where the door hinges went. <laughs> it's just small kitchen cabinets I got hold of. They were originally, I was using them as shelving underneath the um, tables for the Lego seat. And uh, that was actually Filthy House SOS that put them there with the TV on it and whatnot. And I thought, I quite like that idea. So I screwed them all together. 
and made that. <clears throat> you know, so I've got diecasts displayed on it, I've got the consoles, I've got some books. <clears throat> got stereo speakers up there. There's also a burglar alarm that keep going off tonight and I'm going to rip it off the friggin' wall. Seriously, it's on a building just across the way there, so it's not too far from me. You might even be able to hear it just faintly in the background. Actually, I don't know if this mic would pick it up. But it goes off like it is now, it's actually ringing away, and then it'll stop, and then it'll go off again, that's all it's done tonight, for the last three and a half hours actually, that's all it's done, and that alarm has been problematic before, quite a number of times this year actually, I don't know what the building is that it's on, but it's a pain in the ass, and I think I want to get a new one, get that fixed or whatever, but uh, Tempted to get a ladder and climb up there and cut the wires to the bloody speaker. Oh, by the way, this Lego street I've built has actually been built purely from Lego City sets. I've not actually done anything myself. It's literally just Lego's most modern sets that use the new um, row of plates that allow um, the sets to be sort of interlinked together. You know, I know years ago um, companies like Matchbox used to do little play sets like that that you could join them all together and whatnot. <clears throat> yeah, I just I got bored, I had all these sets and I thought, why not? Why not just you know do something with them? So a couple of other sets that I still want to get, like the hospital. I haven't got that one. I want to put that down here, hopefully, if it's going to fit. <laughs> um, I don't know what else there is. I want to get a couple of their road plate packs. Although, if and when I ever do get, you know, space somewhere to build a proper Lego city, as I used to have it, I'm going to go back to using the traditional road plates because I actually prefer those for such a project than these ones. These little smaller ones that they've um, introduced to go with these sets, they're great as a play set. They're great, you know, for kids and whatnot. But um, just not for me, not as an A4 that wants to build a big city, you know, a big model. I mean, you could use those if you really wanted to. And I know there's A4s out there that do actually like these and have used them. <clears throat> you know, we've all got our preferences. And like I said, I, I don't see nothing wrong with them myself. I was a bit sceptical when they released this um, style last year, but they've grown on me. And the only reason I was sceptical is because they are smaller and does mean that some vehicles are a bit too wide to at least stay on one side of the road. <laughs> um, but I suppose as Lego is meant to be, you know, all down to your own imagination, it doesn't matter really, does it? You know, it's not meant to be 100% real. That's what I actually like about Lego. You can either go realistic or you can just use your imagination and go completely wild. Or you could have both. <clears throat> That's probably one of the reasons I've always uh, enjoyed Lego, because you can just do whatever you want. There is no right or wrong way to do something. That's just your way and what your ima imagination says and what you want to do. Obviously, you're always going to get those that are going to pick holes at what you've built and whatnot. Mm, you should have done that like that. You should have done it this way. Or that's not very realistic. You should have done it realistically. Who cares? It's Lego. Create. Even Lego as a company themselves, that's what they promote. They always promote creation. <clears throat> you know, 
they actually want kids to pull the Lego sets apart and uh, you know build something else with it. Although I do like collecting the sets and just displaying them, which you can do as well. Um, although I've mainly done that with the vintage sets, mainly because they are vintage. <laughs> Um, I don't have that many modern sets actually on the shelves. I've only just realised that actually. I've got some over here on the cabinet. That's it. Those are all more modern sets, as in like within the last sort of 10, 15 years. But I've got two of these glass fronted cabinets apart from what's on the bottom three and a half shelves because I've got three on a shelf there um, that's all vintage and I've got another one up the other end there which is all vintage stuff and I've got old oh, Technic sets they're all again with, within the sort of last 10-15 years apart from one <laughs> um, actually there's there's a tow truck up there, and I'm not actually sure when that was released. And I've just realised I've forgotten part of a set for the floor. Forgot the car wash. <clears throat> the only problem is I'm running out of room. And your smudge blesser has already walked over it and she's, um, well as you saw, she's knocked the um, two of the trains over at least. I don't know how, but the front end of one train has actually made it about a foot further this way towards me. <laughs> <clears throat> Which But uh, the other reason I set up the tracks because I thought these trains could do with a bit of an exercise as well. So I've got batteries charged, I've just got to put them in. Although my vintage trains won't run on this track because I need the um, metal tracks, not the plastic. <clears throat> Which I have got, but it doesn't mean setting up a, like a third blade track and I can't be bothered to do that right this minute. Uh. back in its case. I was trying to think. I've got to go over to Mums in the morning, haven't I? Is there anything else that I actually wanted to take? I need a radio for the shed as well. I've got a dab radio up there which works as in it turns on, but it's stuck on Greatest Hits radio at the minute and I can't change it because the buttons don't work. I think because my stepdad used to use it and he used to create so much dust and crap in the shed that's just dirtied up all the buttons so they're not making contact properly. I suppose I could take it apart and try and clean everything up but uh, I've got plenty of radios here I'm sure I could find one to put in my backpack to take over there. <clears throat> I'll have a look in a bit because uh, I want to be prepared for the morning because I just want to get up, get breakfast, get the bike kit on and go. Oh, I've got to remember I've got to go and put some petrol in the pen actually. I know looking at my gauge I know for a fact I've got enough to get there but it won't get me back because there's only two bars showing on that gauge. I've made that mistake before. And ran out of petrol about a mile out of town and I had to walk. I had to do the walk of shame with it. And I ain't doing that again. <laughs> so I'll go across and put four or five quid's worth of fuel in it in the morning. It's all they'll need. You'd be surprised at how far um, so four or five pounds worth of petrol will go in that thing.
of that. Oh, I was just looking at my clocks up there. I've got a funky tick. Because there's four of them. Because it's one of those. Yes, I finally managed to put that up after buying it like three months ago. Four months ago. Something like that. Whenever the yard sales were. Um, so you sort of sit here and when you're quiet you can just hear it go tick 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 tick. You hear all four of them. I need to check New York and Tokyo though, because before I um, actually put it up there, I did notice that they were off. They don't um, slip out of sync. Why well, it was just those two, I don't know. I think I put brand new batteries in those two and uh, put it back before I put it up there. Reset them. Just up there is a decorative piece, I actually quite like it. Do you want to get boards for these windows? Even more so now, because Smudge likes to get up on here and try to get through them and into the kitchen and get onto the worktop. Don't actually know where she is and she's gone quiet. Nope. Not behind the bar, she's not on the back of that sofa. I don't know where she's gone. Oh, I am glad that tonight she's not uh, as much of a pain in the backside as she was last night. She was cool. She was an absolute terror last night. I don't know if it's because I was out all day, and that's why she was acting up, but she was a right pain in my backside last night. You see, because I've been home all day today, she's not been too bad, so... <clears throat> Maybe it was just because I was out all day. I'm probably going to be out most of the day tomorrow as well. Because we are... Uh, can't remember if I mentioned, but me and my stepdad are starting that lean to. He's got a lot... Blah, a load of feather edging. And he's got the beams to do the framework and whatnot. So hopefully tomorrow we can at least get the framework done. I don't know if he wants me to put any power outlets or anything in it or if we're just going to run an extension lead from the main workshop because it's not that far. <clears throat> but he's also going to put double ends on... double ends... double doors on each end of the lean-to. So if you need to get anything through or whatever, you know, it's possible. Uh, we've still got the car, although the car trailer is up the corner in the front yard now. I'm going to have to take a photo of that. Or maybe I could actually just do a little film clip. Because uh, I think when I go over I will take one of my video cameras. Possibly not this one. Because I don't think that battery is holding charge like it should. Um, then again, the other one can sometimes be a bit temperate. Well, actually, ever since I broke the battery open and put it back together again, that's not been temperamental. So it might be the other one. That might be my um, travelling one. Besides, that one is actually in a tattier condition, even though it still works, so I'd rather take that one out. So if it gets lost, damaged, or broken, or whatever, it's not going to matter too much. <clears throat> Although the quality should be just the same on both cameras, because they're both high def, they're both exactly the same, so just different models. In fact, I think the main difference is that one's got the um, built-in projector on the side, so which I've never ever ever used on that in all the years I've owned that one. Right. I'm just debating if I'm actually hungry or if it's just because I'm bored. <laughs> Probably just because I'm bored. I've got an itchy ear. 
that of course my neck is a bit itching all around here as well and I've noticed that it was a bit red so I don't know if I've got an, you know, an allergy to something or if it's my psoriasis playing up I couldn't see in the mirror I was looking in I couldn't get close enough to the mirror right I'm going to end the video here then so thanks a lot for watching everyone um, there will be a link to the Discord server in the uh, description, as always. So, if you'd like to, if you've got Discord, feel free to uh, come and join us and uh, have a chat and whatnot. Um, <clears throat> oh yeah, mind went blank for a second there. <laughs> Comments, etc. in the comment section down below. I do always read them. I may not always reply, but I do always read them. Um, <clears throat> one of the reasons I don't always reply is because I forget. <laughs> I read them and I think, right, I'll just go off and I'll just do this first before I reply. And then by that time it's completely gone out of my head, so I'm sorry if I don't reply. Um, <clears throat> and I've got comments on the last video that I still haven't replied to. I have to slap my wrists. Bad boy. Reply to them. Anyway, <clears throat> thanks a lot for watching everyone and I will talk to you in the next one. Bye.